Thank you. Senator Jerry Bottomer. Good Minister, can I welcome you to the House and to commend you on your elevation to Cabinet. Um, you're no longer the Joe Bradley of Irish politics now, Minister. You're, 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 now, you're now the manager, and um, the punditry is over. Uh, and I wish you every success. And as a former chairman of the Health and Children Committee, I can assure you that the playing field uh, is one that you will be well able for. But I wish you well. Um, I, I, I'm struck, Cahir, look, by, by the revisionist comments of some of my colleagues and friends in the House. Could I, could I remind members that it was actually James Riley and the Fine Gael party with Labour uh, and carried on by Leo Varadkar and then by Simon Harris that launched the trajectory of universal health care. Uh, and it wasn't just a party. Uh, and the, the, the partitionist approach to politics around health always baffles me, Cahir, look. This is about people, north, south, east and west. It's about accessibility. It isn't about what's in the poker. It's about what you need to be done, to, what you need to get done. And that's what this bill is about. It's about accessibility. Um, and, and I think, Minister, if, and, and other people spoke earlier about your legacy. I think if you leave a legacy in health that tackles the structural problems rather than the short-term populism of the trolley or of the latest crisis, you will have left an indelible mark in health. It's about what you're doing today, long-term prevention. It's about building capacity. And it's about measures that are taking on the vested interest, Minister. The vested interest in terms of real reform in our health service. And unlike others, Minister, who commentated, at least you have the courage to say, I want to be Minister. And you are the Minister, and I commend you for that. Others will use the approach of, we know everything, but we won't go into government. But health needs a reform, Minister. And it needs, and I know when you were the spokesman for Fianna Fáil and health, you were cautious about this approach in terms of accessibility. And I think you do need to continue to bring our GPs and our medical community with you. Because as Senator Martin said, they are favourable, they are under pressure. Numbers are increasing in the, in the GP practices. And we do have to, for once and for all, tackle this time and memorial issue of our best and brightest students leaving. And we, I chaired the Health Committee where James Ruddy had a, had a, 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 a trajectory of, 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 of placement and of, of jobs, but we need to make sure that we can put that in structural place. Can I remind the members of the House that in the budget of last year, the highest health budget in the history of the state of 17 billion by the last government prior to the pandemic was put in place. Now we're up to, I think, 20 million. Um, and, and, and I do welcome the, the intergenerational aspect of this bill in terms of the extension uh, 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 of the over 70s in terms of the amendment that provides for an increase to the medical card income levels for persons aged 70 or older uh, to 550 euro and to 1,050 for the married couple. And I also welcome uh, the, the every child under 12 access to GP care. And I think, the, I, I think it was Senator Sherlock maybe mentioned about the under sixes. I, I mentioned about the, uh, the, the age six. That's a very critical age group now. Um, and I welcome that. Every child needs access to healthcare. Intervention early is what we should be doing, whether it's in education or in health. Early intervention. Um, Minister, I have, to be, I have to be honest, I'm like Senator Martin, I'm sceptical about Slauncha Care. I really am. And I would ask you to consider a constitutional convention or citizens' assembly to look at it, away from the political amputator that was here. Um, and I say that, Minister, because scaffolds need to be put in place to, to support our health system. And I just don't know that we can do it from here, and I know the Dáil and the Shannon are the People's Assembly, and we're, but I, I just, as a former member of the Constitutional Convention, would ask you to consider looking at a Citizens' Assembly approach to, to universal health care. Because we need more GPs. Senator Coyne referenced Galway and the Out of Hours Service. In Cork Minister, South Dock needs to be looked at. To, and we need to ensure that we continue our Out of, our, out of Hours Service. The principle of universal health care is one we all subscribe to and want. Um, and I just want to say, Minister, that I'm a small bit worried 
about Sláinte to care that we won't get the buy-in. Uh, and I'll conclude in this, Cahirach. Minister, capacity, resourcing, costings and timelines. And I won't be parochial, but I'll talk to you again about the need for the new hospital in Cork that we need to build. But I wish you every success. Grimagos. Uh, Senator Bortimer. Yeah, uh, um, Minister for Education, Leader uh, Norma Foley, I do believe should come to the House next week. Um, notwithstanding the difficult job that you have, Leader, there is merit uh, in the comments of Senator Higgins this morning regarding the all stages of bills. Um, but I think it's important for us to have our own autonomy here. In advance of the schools and our educational establishments reopening, in September, that we have a debate in the House next week on education, the reopening of our, our, our schools. And let me just put it in context. A principal in Dunmanway, Niall Murphy, put up a tweet yesterday where he said, two metres means eight students in a seven by seven classroom. One metre equals 16 students in a seven by seven classroom. And it is important, I believe, Leader, that we have clarity early and earlier than later regarding our return to third level and return to post-primary and return to primary schools. And we're heading into the last week of July now. And the one thing that our schools do very well is they organise, and I think it's important our government and Minister Foley comes into this house next week to give us all clarity. And I speak as a former teacher uh, and who's been engaged with some of my former colleagues around the back to school and also in third level. Uh, and we now have blended education, we have online education, but we all know quite well the sociological, the educational, the physiological, the development of the child in particular needs them to be in the classroom, in the school, in that setting. Uh, so I would appeal to you, Leader, uh, to have that debate next week. Not an adversarial debate, but a debate where we can have clarity and certainty given to all involved in school settings. Grimagos. Thank you, uh, Senator Annie Hoy. 